hello, and I'm welcoming myself back to California. Just got back from a cool trip to Colorado. Got to see MTM Tat. Lots of family and friends and good times. I had a really, really, really good time. We um, went to this place. If you go to Colorado, skip everything and just go to the Cave of the Winds. There's a lantern tour in Colorado's Cave of the Winds that is just one of the coolest things ever. They give you these old uh, iron lanterns with just a wick and old school candle or oil and flame. I mean, it's like one foot candle a person, dark as hell. You're, you're, you, parts of it, I don't want to deter anybody, but you do have to squat down for like 20, 30 feet at a time where it's only like four foot, three foot tall. But after that, there's like 40 foot caverns. There's real true life stories about the... Um, deaths and things that have happened there wrapped in a little bit of Halloween vibe but not too much and it was just it was just amazing big shout out to Dustin St. Germain the king under the mountain he was our guest host uh amazing storyteller love the dude uh bragged all about him on social media anyway go do that if you're ever in Colorado hey everybody uh Damon 24 hello a little fight Nim Chimsky and all the regulars and Shiraz thanks for joining me everybody so this is Crypt Gift uh while about a year or so back, I won a, a tournament with similar lists like this, but I've got this at 17 basics and one cottage. This is a mono black deck that plays white cards. How do you ask? Well, we don't have to go or so we're just doing it this way. So we've got this little hag, uh, one, one life link. Not much more. You could ask for a creature for one. And when you throw this on it, it's a four, four and it ends games pretty quick. Um, I used to run three back in apparitions, um, leaning on four now because I like to use it as a combat trick, both, uh, as a blocker, but also when you have, uh, if I mentioned Night Sky Mick, you can kind of, you know, take out a Delver by surprise, even if uh, the initial spell gets countered. Uh, four on Earth, we've got four to file. This is the new one. I used to run Orzhov's Gif, or Gift of the Orzhov, uh, which was three mana. This only costs one, and it's, again, more removal. So if you, we add this to, like, the removal spell being that it has Death Touch, and we can throw one of these dorks or, like, you know, one of these guys in and take out a Gurmag Angler and stuff. So between this, four cast downs, and this... We've got like a lot of removal. Speaking of removal, we got four crypt rats, and then you know you throw on life link with that, and uh, only costing one. It's pretty ridiculous when it happens against like elves and such. Let's see. Our card draw is uh, Rager and Zealot, and we can just keep getting stuff back depending on what we need. And this is our big heavy hitter of the deck. Usually a four four, sometimes a seven seven. We'll see. Um, Nimenator. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so that's the main deck uh, in the sideboard. I'm running all four duress, all four uh, diabolic edicts, two distress. And uh, you know what I'm going to run for fairy macabre. I considered uh, actually going down to three because we do have the beck and apparitions. But, um, I, I, you know, I can always discard them and unearth them. We've seen myself do that before. I've seen myself and one siphon life. So with that being said, we're going to go through here. And we've got some Strixhaven previews to go through too. i got to make sure that I have the right deck and that I'm going for two players this time. Big, uh, big new wide, wide world. So as we're waiting for opponents, um, this Pilgrim of the Ages is interesting. I don't think I'm going to play with it right away. But remember when I was talking about Imperial Armor? Um, so it goes and gets you a basic, and then mid to late game, you can just return it from your graveyard to your hand. Um, I'm just always looking for ways to kind of keep my hand full, and uh, some some day, some year, some decade in the future, be able to play with Imperial Armor. So I'll cross that one off, and we'll get to the next uh, one as we uh, wait for our game to load up. There we go. We'll get to that in a minute as we go into game number one. We'll see how we did. Did you not use the link I sent you, Deluxe? Oh, no, the mothership's got it now, so I'm going that. And I, I did. I went to it in Timsky, and I was a little, like, uh, I guess confused. Um, we'll keep this a little, little heavy-handed on the lands, but we'll, we'll go from there. But, yeah, I wanted me to enter these uh, parameters and stuff, and I was like, oh, I was just expecting a link that just showed me commons, but... <laughs> Oh, no, no problem, Lauren Sushi. You can just uh, rewind the show at the top of the day. We'll, we'll show it in uh, middle stages and such. So good morning back at you. And uh, we've got, I finally went and I uh, logged into uh, MTG Goldfish. So if one of my uh, cast and crew can bring up that link, I know uh, Little Fight did it at the top of the show. Um, so a little bit easier than just copy pasting a deck list. Now we're going to have a link for you guys. If you want to just download the list that I'm playing today, it's going to be there. I tried to make that a regular thing. Um, signed up. It was awfully easy to do. And uh, it's about time I do it. And so now there it is. Thank you, Shiraz. And a little fight earlier. Boy, that's a pretty island. So anyway, yeah, that cave of the cave of the winds in Colorado is just amazing. Um, 
I can't say much about the other parts of the tour. Um, I mean, they have they have just historic cave things and and this that and the other. But um, I don't see why you would want to do it any other way. It was it was just a fascinating fascinating uh, day. So, alrighty. Well, we've got some options here. I do have unearth, and that's going to be really nice with this mimic, which I think. You know, boy, I want to do this like straight away, in the hopes that. Um, I, I draw one of our Arshav spells and I can get him for a lot of damage and not appear to be doing so. So, yeah. Ah, there we go. Hey, Clapton Vlad Tepis in the house. So we go up against Simic Fog. I don't like our chances in this one. Um, Don't have... I mean, we've got duress and things like that, so it'll probably be a long first game, but it's okay. We're playing a fast deck today, and uh, we well, shall hope for the best. Yeah, I got to meet MTM Tad over a pretty uh, fun, funny... Uh, lunch and his little girl, quite a cutesy. And then, um, yeah, Sammy Koff, my brother, got to hang out with him. We grew up, um, as I'm fond of saying, very isolated on a cool lake, all of our own in a forest. And so uh, he has a really big backyard. The reason I bring this up, uh, I was able to finally get back into um, axe and knife throwing. He's got quite a collection and taught me from a young age and so we had a lot of fun doing that and then it just completely snowed one day and I'm no stranger to snow but I have never seen nor has he flakes this big they were like a uh, soda can bottom size some of them it was it was like it was it was ridiculous it took some of sapphire just standing in it and got a uh, maybe like one inch on the ground and then it was gone in the morning so pretty trippy stuff all right well let's uh let's try to fall right into uh one of our what do you call edge of divinity spells so welcome aboard clapton vlad tepis yes it's been a while thanks for coming back you know i just cut a land the other day and i'm getting flooded here again but that's my fault for keeping a four lander right i want to just keep churning things out we don't have to worry about board wipes the uh worst card in their deck against us is tangle what kind of holds us up for a, sort of a half turn but I think they're expecting a sort of EOT trick. Now our Graveyard Hate will be somewhat decent here. We'll be able to get rid of, um, what do you call, uh, Weather the Storm. That's the big problem. Nope, we didn't play any any popper um, MTM. I was try I, too bad I couldn't get a picture either. He's... Uh, Pretty strict on the COVID side of things. You can't blame anybody these days, but uh, see how we kept quite a distance. Would have, would have been great another another time of the year or another time of the era, but we'll be back. I got family in the area, and uh, yeah. Oh, we launched a rocket, too. My brother bought the best rocket you can get as a civilian and not have like a special license. He spent quite a bit on it too. And oh my God, that thing went like a half mile up into the sky. I think it was rated at like quarter of a mile or something. And um, and we put like some extra turbo engine on this third one. And <laughs> that was like, I'm surprised we even retrieved it. It came down pretty, pretty close to us. It was like, wow, that's a, uh, that was impressive. I'm just going to keep drawing cards here. I wanted to be able to turn on my, um, Edge of Divinity, but at this stage of the game, i got to be careful not to play too many spells just because of uh, you-know-who. All right. Let's, uh, we wanted a uh, colorful spell. We got one. Yeah, model rockets. <laughs> Moon Nazis. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yes, yes. <laughs> Bald Squad says Rocksteady. Of course. Here we go. I wouldn't have a haircut any other way. That's two spells. That's I guess one's not gonna matter. If he's got tingle, he's got it. I'm sure we're gonna walk into a fog here. This is our first time we've hit from one just a few. Yep. There's the one we don't want to see. Now we got a nice big old fat rat behind this. We might be able to keep our keep them in check with life. Uh, eat a fog and then maybe uh, drop the rat as a surprise move and see if they can't squeak out of that. Oh, Punk Toast Doobie, it was great. Uh, just rewind the show. I don't want to bore everybody with the recap. I did it right at the top of the show. But the main takeaway is if you go to Colorado and you have one thing to do, go to the Cave of the Winds. Um, the Lantern Tour is amazing. You can 
skip 15 I'm, i don't want to say halloween because everybody's going to think it's some knowing me it's some it's not i mean you're in the dark and you've got a little candle and you're hearing stories about things events that have gone on there so it's like this kind of a dark history lesson but in a very cool setting and strange neat fact you're down so deep it's about a mile you walk underground too total some of the caverns have like 60 foot high walls it's a, it's really amazing um but, and you know the whole time you're learning about you know, history and such. So very cool. Well, I'm going to try to get that night sky mimic up and we can just have a little th three Peter where these guys attack, get tangled. And then these three attack, get tangled unless the, uh, our opponent does something dumb and taps out and goes crazy. I should be really paying attention here. We haven't seen, so they've got moments of peace. Alrighty. Boop. I've been telling my son to play muddle the mixture in, um, our, uh, uh what do you call it? Commander decks, yeah. We played at the airport, too. That was pretty fun. We played a lot of places. All right, let's attack. We didn't get our little mimic thing online, but it's all right. Coming over for four. And I will... I think I'm going to drop the rat here. Depends on if he uh, uses up his moves there. i got to get that rat in. So... Is it going to hit? If it hits... I don't think I play the rat. I don't know if I play anything. Yeah, I'm afraid of a uh, EOT uh, weather the storm here. Okay, that's cool. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Binding of Isaac. My uh, Sapphire had that game when it first came out. Hasn't played it much since though, but. Hard to, it's funny, my oldest, uh, Alex, who doesn't play Magic Online since for like 10 years, he played like for a weekend, and he knows how to play Magic, but he leaves that to the pros, his dad and his younger brother. But he's been playing that, uh, uh, what is it, Legends, the new one that came out. He's just been loving it. He's pretty high up in it and stuff. It was so funny. Some Something came up about Popper, and he... And he mentioned me, and whoever it was actually knew. And I was like, what? I was like, that's a trip. That blew my mind. Here we go with Dusk Legion Zealot. Dun, 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 dun. DLC is absolutely amazing. All right. I'll let him know. Like he needs another game in his life, but he was chomping at the bit to get back because uh, his Card Kingdom order came in while we were gone and uh, he was all over that so well i'm gonna do this just to show you guys uh what it does i don't think we're gonna win this game just they've got a pretty hard lock on us here um you know one one weather the storm and they're gonna be laughing all the way to the life bank now shiraz i know i've asked this over the years but forgive my uh state's ignorance what the hell is a quid to a dollar is there a ratio that makes sense to a westerner like me Let's go like, I want to, ah, man, I don't know. Do we want to do that? Let's see if we can just get him to, uh, I'm just going to come at him with, with almost lethal. Should I? We'll do, we'll do, we'll do lethal. He's going to pog us anyway. A quid is a pound. I know, but dollar wise, like, what is it? Well, I guess how much, uh, how many dollars are in a pound? I should probably look this stuff up. Not, not put it on your back. Pound is half a cube. <laughs> all you bastards. <laughs> I see what you're all doing. Just keep passing the ball. <laughs> all right. Okay. I don't want to walk into a counter. I really want that Crypt Rat to hit. But we've got an Earth, so I'm going to play him. There's a uh, Weather the Storm. I might just scoop here that's okay we'll draw lots of cards don't have weather the storm don't have it they always have it though there it goes oh nope hey we're just drawing cards all right damn that was a high storm count that was like scoop count highness <laughs> scoop count highness sounds like almost highness like royalty yeah i want to use the ability and we will say yes cool we've got options Want to keep our life team going. Double tangle, pretty nasty, but now they got moments of peace still. <laughs> one dollar for one punt. That'd get expensive quick. All 
Alrighty. And so now we have two unearths left. Which is cottage two, but it's not quite as exciting. It's more your Crypt rats really our only way. Who knows? We haven't seen uh weather the storm yet, so maybe they're stormless. I doubt it. That's the best fog ever, gaining fifty life. Simic fog. I have to say, I'm kind of surprised you don't see this deck more often. And we were showcasing it a few months back with Spell Slam's awesome list. And, you know, I think they figured it out too. You just throw pieces of the puzzle in place of um, whatever that uh, uh, fall from favor was. And you keep on moving. All right. We'll make a big fat fatty. We'll go like this. Probably not going to do anything. Not the best first round thing you want to run into. It just kind of slows everything down. But. I'll make the most of it as Mr. Chatterbox here does his best to entertain y'all. Nothing to do but attack here. Hiya! As we are drawing cards, and the majority of them are dead because we have so much removal. All right, there's that. We can dismiss this. Let's move this eyesore up there and such. Look at you, Shiraz, buying new games, buying new keyboards. I got... What do we have? What do we got? Frantic inventory. How am I behind on time? There, the fog deck. What's going on? Nice tasting lands, though. Very pretty. All right. It's going to go all out here. Got to keep our life total above theirs, and we might be able to unearth a rat and do a nice little surprise move, but doesn't look like it's going our way anytime soon. There's our third unearth, and our second rat. He's uh, getting pretty lucky with these uh, poles here. Up, oh, there's our two third rat, fourth unearth. All right, it's scoop time. Can't pull out of that. We'll bring in our sideboard and uh, get this show on the road. <laughs> 16 years old for your old keyboard. Holy cow. Yowza. Is he like Commodore 64 we're talking? <laughs> All right. We're bringing this in. We're bringing uh, two distress. All the duresses. Unless they got some Jace's switcheroo. I'm not too worried. Uh, we can always block and kill stuff. So for right now, we're just going to get rid of all of our spot removal. Leaves us with one spot open. Might as well bring in another creature. We can always use it to uh, nab a EOT. Uh, what do you call uh, moments peace? And I think I'm gonna want to see that more than I will this. So I'll bring in the other two phase. I'd like to get in that fourth. Just so we got it. Um, edge back in on Earth. But I'm not. Here we go. Woo! Yep, I'm bringing them. Remember, uh, fans of the show probably roll their eyes because I've said this probably 10 times in the last two years, but you can always discard Fairy Macabre and target nothing and then just unearth it. It's a nice tempo play. You lose a bit of, you lose a bit of a card economy, but yeah, I want to play first. I'll open up this. I've got the goods. We're going to keep. This is a really good opening hand unless they have bounce. Because instead of digging and having plenty of time like last time, this is going to be a 4-4 four, four on turn 2. So that's pretty cool. That's a 2005 keyboard. Little fight with the knowledge. And kaboom. Yield through this turn. Yeah, and apologies. Uh, my inbox was just slammed both on Facebook and our propaganda one. And I am slowly getting back. I didn't think taking uh, five days off would be that big of a thing, but um, I guess I just underestimated how much day-to-day -day little, you know, you have your coffee, you answer some things, you look at a few deck lists, you do some things, and then if you go uh, go on a desert island for five days in a row, it can uh, really add up. <laughs> so let's do this to this to this. Not that we need the life, but it is nice to do that. Uh, yeah, let's drop the... Uh, other dude down. Come on over for four. 
Siphon Life's going to do some work here. I don't think I really want to wait around for a Giganto Crypt Rat. I think play it, pull a counter spell, use it as kind of a duress, and then Siphon Life's going to do some heavy lifting. Okay, there's something we need. Let's see what they got first. Get a counter or see some cards. I don't want to walk into a tangle on purpose. The rest. Oh, and the new set, Strixhaven. Um, really impressed with the um, flavor text. I'm pretty impressed. That's a pretty good card against my deck. What do we got here? Arcane Denial. All right. And we don't really have much of a target there, so let's uh, just attack again. Let's say hit my land drop. I had nothing but lands last time, so... Hey, hey, Propaganda Height! MTM Tad in the house! All right. Yeah, we're going to draw these. We need our lands big time. Yes. That was funny. I got, got home last night, and I was like... I had this idea for this new deck... Um, and I was starting to build it, and then I had to make the show and, you know, set up all my hotkeys. And, you know, I, was, and I just was like, what am I doing? I was just like, I got I to, gotta, I'll, I'll save that for next week when I can gear up for it. Because I was sitting there just mentally going through, because my, my uh, phone, I forgot to download my favorite podcast. So the whole flight, I was kind of like 80s kid. I was just stuck with nothing to do, uh, airplane mode and such. I couldn't, couldn't turn anything on. And so I was just stuck doing a whole lot of nothing. So I was just trying to like make it this list in my mind work over and over again and uh yeah good times all right down goes my cup i want to grab that stream of thought keep the pressure up boink we'll see how this goes yeah boink these are pretty cool looking tokens. My goodness, when are we going to draw cards? I guess let's attack first. Yeah, frustrating. Could argue a Dusk Legion there, a higher probability to draw the swamp. All right, this is one we do want to see Macabre or a swamp show up. Yeah, thank you for that little fight. There we go. All righty. Well, hmm. let's turn on the heat while we've got it. Wonk. Bam. Two four fours. Feeling good. Did you see? Oh, I've been told the uh, the serpent on Netflix. Yeah, I'm about to start watching that. Maybe Monday ish. Um, my brother just raved about it, so I heard it's pretty good. What do you say, Nim Chimsky? From what I've heard. All right. Hmm. I'm going to keep my creatures up. Let's see if I can draw a macabre, maybe. That'll change the attack ratio greatly. Just started. I'm on episode three now. All right. Well, for what it's worth, my. Br my brother was pretty into it. Boy, the lands are just hiding from us here. I'm just going to go aggro here. Probably walk right into a tangle. Hopefully he uses that moment's piece up. All right. Well, now if we do draw a, uh, what do you call, a fairy macabre, we'll be able to at least have a nice go of it ask him to have another one main in his hand but that 4-4 four, four body is no joke, two of them okay, there goes Ponder it was so funny, we were in the airport yesterday and uh, you know, I'm playing a vampire zombie, demon devil deck uh, with Anya as my commander and we're just sitting there spread out and this family sits across from us and 
they have no idea what magic is and they're like looking at all this stuff and you know sapphire's got all these gems and things to do with his cards and had two little girls and they were kind of looking at stuff and then um obviously trying to keep distance blah 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 but uh it was <laughs> it was so funny because you know we were sitting there playing for quite a while and all, all these scenarios came up with devil this demons that and you know and then like i felt bad because then like it i don't know half hour later they they had like quite a bit of a church talk going on and things and i was like oh i was like hope i didn't uh offend them much there all right let's safe in some life Oh, macabre at the end of turn as we eat their life and attempt to do two more. Kind of a strange conundrum here. Do you really fog two damage? I don't know. I'll just come over for this. And I believe I'll grab the... Uh, you could argue both fogs or the accumulated knowledge and the moments piece might be the pull here. Depending if they have another stream of thought, you hate having them refresh their entire hand with that stuff. But all righty. Evil Dead's pretty gruesome and definitely evil, but worth the watch. Cabin in the Wood flicks. Yeah, the old the trope in the woods, right? All right, we'll grab Moments Peace and Accumulated Knowledge and ask them to have a counterspell, right? I mean, a, not a counterspell, a fog in hand, not lean on peace there. All right, and draw some more there, wonk, here we go, we've got this, I don't think more creatures is going to do much of anything here, um, four, six, let me do this first, Roop. Ah, shouldn't have done that first actually, well, another tangle will suck, but I'm just going to come over with this, see if it's enough. Another tangle in our future. It's a moment's piece. All right. Well, Siphon Life is just going to keep doing some work. Tie up at least half his mana each turn, so he can't do too many shenanigans. I don't know if I've ever seen The Evil Dead. I know I've heard a lot about it and seen a lot of clips over the years and Stuff, but just to sit down and watch them all. Don't believe so. Well, there's a there's the answer there. Another tangle shows up, and here we are. Well, we might as well do this now. Bonk. All right, frantic inventory, frantic inventory, and two tangles. Well, I guess we get rid of one. And I'll come over just for five. Forcing him to keep that mana available. My son's going to be so happy I'm playing duress. He did that again. That's just really, Actually, that's the better play. You know, end of turn macabre is problematic. A... Uh, Main phase duress is not. You just cast it in response and boom. It's a groovy movie, says Georgie Pie. Good to hear from ya. Opponent's avatar. Ah! <laughs> hey, it does look like that, MTM Tat. It's two me's. That's, that's one too many. <laughs> Maybe two too many, depending on who you ask. <laughs> two headed giant. I think that was one of the original avatars. All right. Hey. Got a few options here. Governor. I just don't know if that's quite worth it. In we go for five more. Boink. As we get tangled again. All right. Cross that one off. Don't think we've got too much to worry about. Printing inventory. All right. I really want to draw some lands here, but I don't want to play that Rager out. I want to be able to respond to that other frantic inventory. So, Enjoyed the rest of your trip, I hope. Sorry if late and already chatted. Oh, yeah, we just rewind the top of the show. Yeah, I was bragging all about the Cave of the Winds. 
That is a national treasure, if you ask me. However, I think you've got to get the right um, guest, host. Or I don't know what, what they call him, but uh, we had Dustin St. Germain, affectionately known as the King Under the Mountain, and he was exquisitely awesome. Very cool. I have a lot of friends that are really good, you know, at uh, improv and just making stuff up on the fly and stories and stuff, and uh, he was top top of the class, to use a Strixhaven metaphor. A phrase, I should say. All right. A lot of lands going down. Our King Denial in hand. Stream of thought. He is digging for some fog effect. Shall they get it? Shall they not? Anything we draw is good. Especially a land. All right. Pull that one off. Ah. W. All right. Down to the tiebreaker. That would make a great sticker. Deluxe of Goblins. I want to find another spot for the last one here. Crypt Rats is good, but only late. So I want to only see it late. So I'm going to rock all four Macabs this time. Saw how uh, reliant they are on the fog effects. We have not seen uh, Weather the Storm. I'm starting to think this person's just going all in with the fog plan. Um, well, hats off to him. I don't know. Uh, I don't think I could pull that off. Scary. All right, let's go. So yeah, next week we're gonna rogue go crazy rogue. This is kind of competitive rogue. I know I keep saying week after week we're gonna dabble in not the silly but just neat stuff. Might even do the deck live. I don't know. Make it live, but thinking a lot about it. All right, that's a pretty good hand. We'll keep it. Let's open up the yards. Good to see all of you. I thought I was crazy when I flew in last night, and I'm like, I gotta do the show in the morning, but. Before I knew it, I was up and ready to go. Did most of it this morning, actually. Here we are. Crazy Rogue. Yeah, I'm all about the madness lately. Hmm. Do I do the move? Just for the tempo? Sure, let's just do it. Because, uh, yeah, we'll do that. Boink. And then we'll just do this to get some early pressure up and running. Two cards for one thing, but hey. We're here to entertain, right? How you like that move? Plus, it gets him a little queasy. It's like, oh, man, he must have like three or four of those. It's like, we do. We've got one in our hand. I'm wantonly throwing them out there. Bit reckless, some may say. Got to play it fast and loose. Woo! Ba -ba -bum. Did that. Oh, does anybody, uh, speaking of the new set coming out, uh, does anybody know of any lesson options that are like viable? I know the learn mechanic's interesting, but the everything I'm seeing is quite a stretch for, for the lessons to be kind of relevant. All right, we have quite a few on Earth targets. I've got quite a few other targets. So far, what I'm seeing, I hope they, I want them to revisit old mechanics a little bit more often. I don't know. Am I alone in that? Would you guys mind? You know me. I'd, I'd love to see Retrace and about once a year come back in a set. I just think there's some mechanics, even Flashback and just some old originals where um, they keep doing like dumbed down versions of cool old mechanics and just kind of, I think, confusing new players with extra words that don't really need to be there. But I would love to see mechanics get more options. All right. Yeah, I guess if they quizzed us, they'd get polar different, uh, what do you call, ideas, reviews, whatnot. Let's let's just go all in here. I really hate to see a tangle right now, but um, I don't know. That might be better next turn, huh? It'll definitely hit harder. I'm going to save that for next turn. We do have that fourth mana if we run into a tangle here. Hopefully this is a moment's piece followed by a land drop, and they just stall, and then we can... Uh, Faye and then going, I think, for the win. God, that would be a 7, 11, 13, 14 damage next turn, if uh, my math is right. Oh, you're agreeing with me. <laughs> All right, phase one of my hoping quest of the future is complete. Now we want to see a land drop and then pass the turn and then EOT, Fairy Macabre. Woo! 
All right. Popper Crackle Barrel redeemed propaganda hype. That's what I am all about. Kind of live in the moment, live in the hype. Yep. If you look at, I think, episode one, we had propaganda, propaganda. <laughs> that was good times. I could grab that at the EOT, but unless they're running old school fog, I think we almost got them here. This is going to hit really hard. Booyah. As we come in like this, smack. This will be a 7-7 seven, seven followed by a 4-4 four, four and a 2-2. Two, two. Oh, my God. This deck all of a sudden got really big. Whoop. Hey, it's getting better and better. Attack. Whew. 13. Let's see a chittering rat do that. Yeah, so I missed Popper Classic Tuesdays for probably the first time in I don't know how long. It's been a while. Got him to six. Within striking distance. We still got our macabre trick. We got a siphon life coming forward. We don't have to attack with more than like one creature now. Which turns Tangle into a very expensive fog. Unless an introduction to Annihilation seems interesting. Yeah. What's the... Uh, I'm pretty into that biomathematician. The Simic dude. I think there might be something there with those... What are they called? The uh, refractal tokens or something? Um, I don't see many more cards that agree with it. But I think if you could, you know, ghostly flicker that or do, do a lot of shenanigans with it, that could get interesting quick. All right. I better stop chatting and do the thing. We'll grab both of these up. Ask him to have the real deal in hand. Do we get a scoop or are they uh, waiting here? All right. Looks like they're looking for another fog. Maybe they found it. Maybe they didn't. We don't need to do really anything here except a attack. Oh, okay. Well, now this makes it really easy. We just attack and win. All right. I didn't think we'd win that one, but we did. I've got, uh, we're going to go right into the second game here. Go over the list real quick here. I've been seeing Peeling Dick with. All righty. So, yeah, let me, uh, well, let's fire this up and maybe it'll take a long time for somebody to show up. Um, yeah, Curate looks interesting. Being able to do, uh, that's one of the ones I re-sculpt is another one that I thought um, was pretty cool. XL Artifact or Creature, make a 4-4 four, four blue and red elemental creature token at instant speed. That could that could be a pretty nasty trip. Um, not saying any of these things I'm pointing out are going to you know break any formats or anything, but they're ones I'm going to keep an eye on and probably grab. Um, yeah, and I already discussed last week the... Um, the Malice, or is it uh, this one? Lash of Malice. Very really cool. You get pump and you get removal, instant speed. That's a lot of card. Now, the good uh, uh, flavor text all throughout. We've got, I was pretty interested in um, ah, Red's first day of class. Wasn't that it? Ah, da, 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 da. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Creature enters the battlefield under your control. Put a plus one counter on it. Gains haste until the end of turn. Learn. I know uh, Ken Waku's really been into that lately. Um, we've got the... Oh, the Fuming Effigy is pretty interesting. I just think there might be something where you can, you know, combo out with this card in the future. Or maybe it exists already. And man, that artwork is so cool. Some spirits share ancient wisdom. Others just get mad you touch their stuff. <laughs> Little... Illustrious Historian was another one I was uh, pretty interested in. I mean, right here, you're already legit, and then Red gets to play with its graveyard, being able to exile itself and make an upgrade with the uh, Red White Spirit creature token. Very cool. And then we've got, obviously, in green, you know, the Biogriff. That's going to probably be the card that sees the most play. And uh, Reckless, 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 something or other. Reckless, uh, one of the other ones that caught my eye. Um, oh. Somebody doesn't know their alphabet. Ah, there he is. Reckless Amplomancer. Double their power and toughness until the end of turn. In a color that can ramp and uh, do some stuff, I think you might be seeing like a mono green hexproof without hexproof, but you know what I mean? Like uh, just the, the super pump with like ancestral mask and then just being able to uh, 
OP this stuff. Probably isn't worth going there compared to what uh, other creatures do. But hey, but this is the guy that's really got my eye. It's probably going to be the thing I want to try to build around first. When it enters the battlefield, you create a 0-0 zero, zero green and blue fractal creature token. You put a plus 1-1 one, one counter on each fractal you control. And what a quote. I will reach infinity. Just nuts. But yeah. Anyway, I did not think where are, where is everyone? This is a uh, this is crazy. I've been talking about this and uh, we haven't seen uh, oh there's some tournament 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 going on. Okay, well we'll keep it up. Blood researchers inter interesting, but you know pretty fragile. So changelings are fractals. Good point, Nichols. Yes, yeah. Like I said, there's going to be a whole lot of stuff. I don't think any of the other fractal cards are that interesting because they're all in on like one X creature token sort of thing. Um, pretty fragile, but you're already playing the color of, you know, snap and counterspell and things like that. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just overall pretty pretty cool, valiant effort for a set. And, uh, yeah, pretty interesting. Like this guy, here's a lesson, but it's like really going to pay three mana for a 2-1 flyer. I don't think that's going to really break any uh, matchups, uh, bringing it in from outside the game and such. And the nice combat tricks and Boros. And boy, this is quite a heavy hitter for the mana. Travel and lifelink. Could take a little bit of enchantment on there would be pretty cool. A lot of people have uh, emailed me about this guy saying, does it fit in my uh, Death Touch deck? I don't think so. Uh, Flash is half the uh, battle. And this is a little quicker wing coaddle without being quicker, meaning uh, they're going to hit the same turn regardless. And I'd rather have the surprise of the uh, the old standby favorite. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the uh, teach by example. Was, was there another? Uh, uh, <laughs> is that here? Or did we already pass it? Yeah. All right. Anyway, Little Fight, if you're on, give me a uh, come join me if you're on. I, I'm, this, is a, this is a first. I've never. Uh, did we just time out? Or did I not make it? What the hell? Well, I apologize. I never saw the. Uh, Okay, well, that makes a lot more sense. I apologize to whoever that was. I didn't catch the name. I guess I have to focus a little bit more and not uh, leave the program because, uh, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Sorry about that, everybody. But, hey, we got the review out of the way for whatever good that was. All right. Here we go. Ew. One mana. Hold on, look at this. We'll keep this. And what shall I put back? This is kind of a... I'll throw that back. We don't have a rat in hand, and uh, it's early in the game. So don't usually like to see that too early and often. Here we are. Boink! Nichols likes the Boros cards. Ooh, Delver's showing up. All right. Let's see some of our removal show up, please. Let's go fix our mana. There we go. Yield. With all these hags around, we might be able to trick out a uh, fairy if we do draw into a cast down or a defile. We'll see. Speaking of seeing, what are we going to see? Nothing yet. This, the Delver is keeping its secrets. Going to be a nice unearth target. I don't know when the new cards become playable. I feel a little guilty. Uh, I've been off off the grid for like a almost a week straight, and so like I said, my inbox and everything else, and I was I'm not at the uh, tip of the tongue with the answers this week. So if somebody knows, say it in chat and enlighten us all. Let's go get something. I don't want to walk into a ferry, but a hard counter I'm fine with because I'll just follow it up with a yep. Cool. I don't know why anyone would want to counter that. There we go. Attack. Almost play even with Delver if they're going to do the old Drago. Yeah, it is. I agree with him in Little Fight there. It's so nice to have more multicolored options. Just as an aesthetic thing, it's, uh, it always seems like the realm of the rare cards. And I love any set that just, it's like, hey, commons, here you go. Here's some colorful stuff to play with. So, And I have to say, the Strixhaven thing's feeling pretty cool. Two weeks, I think, says Captain Vlad Tepes. Not just Vlad Tepes. He's the captain. Captain of the vampires. I think that's the card I'm sitting inside of. What does that say? <laughs> Cheesy joke, sorry. All right, we got... Let's call it uh, UB Dover. <laughs> UB Dover. 
Yeah, so word of the wise uh, or the ignorant, if you go on a plane trip, before you get on the plane, make sure your podcasts are downloaded. They, uh, I just thought they would work. So I got through one, and I'm like, all right. And then it was like unavailable. I'm like, oh, no, I didn't do it in time. Terrible. Attacking. These are some terrible draws, but good news is our opponent's uh, not hitting Delver. And I'm going to keep that other Nip Gwillian back. What are we going to see? You going to show us something, Delver? He done done with the secrets? Nope, still not done. Man, oh, they got just all lands and creatures in that list. Yeah, the the mimics are. I definitely think the Orzhov got gets the uh, gets the push on that. It's one of those decks. It definitely has a rogue feel to it. You know, you see that little witch hag come down, but boy, if it's followed up with any of our little combo plays after that, you can it can get out of hand pretty quick, and you're gaining life too. And then you throw on some removal and hand destruction package in the uh, sideboard, and you got a pretty pretty good contender. I'm going to do the bluff here. I'm going to tap three things. I'm going to play one. We have absolutely no play after this. We're just drawing too many swamps. But I'm going to play to our strengths. Haha. -ha. Sit on that counter. As the realization of what just happened washes over them in utter shame. Hopefully. Or maybe they're like, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> But things have changed in the arena and online play. Yeah, they're always, they're not too consistent with that stuff, are they, Captain? Got two captains in here. Woo! Finally! Cast down showing up. <laughs> it's got to feel like a downgrade. Like, none of these creatures are worth it, really, yet. Maybe the Delver's got to sit back on defense, because it's just a three for three game now. All right. Well, let's see if we can do a cast down. Another counter? Probably. All right. Well, I'll just keep him in mystery land. There's two counter spells down. I haven't seen one of these lists in a while, or I haven't studied them. Are they running a spell stutter sprite most of the time? I would assume so, but I. Maybe not with the uh, Delver. Maybe they're just going tall with that and the uh, Angler and a lot of removal and counter magic. Who knows? Nichols, yeah, just uh, let either Nim, Shiraz, Toothmaker, or Little Fight know what's up and we'll go from there. All right, removal's coming up pretty hardcore here. We need to. Uh, I don't know what we need to do. We need to get past that. We're not gonna. And all of our enchantments aren't going to be good now because they have instant removal. So our little quick lead led to nothing because we just keep doing that. Drawing lands over and over again. I'm just going to attack here. Act like I've got something that I don't. Yes, infinite. Oh, <laughs> a busy. I don't think you'd want it the way it's playing this game, but... Uh, it's a it's a pretty solid little list, but yeah, our uh, moderators will throw that up. And for propaganda first, we finally uh, got a MTG Goldfish account and uh, set that all up so that things make sense and you can just go download it and you don't have to squint and all these other things. So, and I'll put uh, that in the description of the YouTube video as well. So, and look at that, we come in for all of one. So much removal. We'll cross that one off. There's at least another cast down here. It's kind of hoping for that kind of play, just a little mop up move. Uh oh, things are getting grim. Plus, it'll be cool going on. I don't know if you can sort things by that, but it'll be nice to have a uh, physical reference point on the online of some of the decks we've played. Wish I would have done it from day one, but. Whatever. Yeah. The Fleet Admiral usually does close the door. Boop. Show me... Uh, 
concede. All right, that's what happened last time, but we won the we won the overall match. Lost the first game. Let me adjust. It's on a plane so often yesterday. My backside is still a little sore. All right. Well, we've got some options here. I'm not too worried about back and apparition. I do want to have at least one of them just to turn on uh, some tricks with Delver. It might be kind of nice. I probably actually want two of them. The Alchemist Gift is really cool uh, against Swarm Decks and stuff, but I'm going to lose it here. I like it against Elves and kind of more go wide decks. The Crypt Rat, not going to be that great here. I do like the Macabs, but uh, I'd rather just go for the uh, some hand destruction. Could bring in the distress too. We've got plenty of uh, plenty of removal. Let me get go down to two rats here. I'm gonna bring this in and all of the uh, edicts. No, not all of them. Two of them. Two rats. Do that. We've got the rest. We got the file. We got all kinds of goodies. The edge of divinity might feel a bit underwhelming uh, against a deck with that much removal. But I don't want to cut the numbers because it's so good so early. So Rager better than rats. Yep, that's why I lost two rats. You know what? I'm going to bring in that other distress and grab the creatures and grab counter spells. Just can't miss. Dun dun dun. Woo! Yeah, I'm glad I got my butt out of bed and did the show. Last night I was like, I don't know, maybe I should postpone. Getting older, I tell you. Well, we've got a very defensive hand, don't we? If we don't draw into another creature or some combo, I don't really like this hand. But there's a scenario here where, you know, a nice Delver draw and we've got an answer, but I'm going to mulligan this. That's kind of a nothing burger. All right, we'll keep this. Mm. I'll throw back one of those dudes just in case we don't hit our third land drop. We should. I'll say okay. And down comes problems. Edicts aren't that big of a deal for me. Pretty land. Love that skyscape. Very nice. Yeah, so that uh, biomathematician. I expect some interesting, fun, roguey things with that. Very cool. All right. Go from here. We don't really have much of a target, so let's go see what we're cooking with. As we duress and see a whole lot of removal. The stack. Ponder, Brainstorm, Agony Warp. The Admiral. Hmm. I guess we just, uh, I'll take out an Agony Warp. Really wish we hit a land there, but I'll keep open this. Check it off as things go along. Alrighty. The bog does nothing. I'm probably going to ponder here. Yep. Boop. Cross that off. Hopefully they stay so creature light and we can get some guys on the board. I'm sure they're not going to last long with their removal and my removal, but hopefully the volume wins out and we can steal the Monarch, but not sure if that's in the cards. Literally. Come on. Give me a land. Give me a land. Give me a land. Give me a land. Nope. Second best thing. Maybe this will give me a land. Give me a land. Nope. All right. Well, hey, we've got numbers hmm. outside of like a nausea or something shrivel. It's going to be, feel kind of silly to use your turn getting rid of a 1-1 one, one body right now. This deck's not representing well this game. Rewind the last game. You can see some better fireworks, but we're kind of drawn a little clunky here. Interesting play. Letting us know what's in their hand. Now this will tell us loads. Now we really know what's in their hand. Do you grab the duress or do you grab the cast down? Oh, is that how the rules work on that? I might have uh, overrated that card then. What if I 
I'm no rules hound, that's for sure. I believe they would all just retain it the way I read it, but I have been wrong before. What? I'm just going to get out creatures here. He's got to do a board committal here, and he knows he's just going to walk into a, a wall of removal on our end, too, since the duress just showed him that. So I just, man, really would be nice to draw one of our edge of divinities there, keep it alive against Agony Warp, at least one of the dudes. Yeah, but I think they're 1 1 counters, if I'm not mistaken. They don't just stay for that turn. All right, let's cut off Brainstorm. Man, come on, land. Yeah, Dreamer Stingo, that's what I'm thinking. Heck, even ninjas. Just keep playing the dude. It's more of a late game package, but I don't think it's any tournament smasher, but it's going to be a lot of fun to have on the battlefield. Another color color option. I think you want to brew with Gaia Skyfolk. All right. That's a good play there. I like that. He's like, you want to use the same sort of logic we have. Like, go ahead and use your removal. Look at this creature. All right, we're going to kill that. Now he's going to come pull... A bit of our removal, and we're going to be stuck staring down a captain, and yep, boop, as he's going to pull, probably cast down here, I would assume. Almost forcing us to use Edict. Here we go. All right, they're hell, I'm not hellbent, they're tapped out. <laughs> well, that kind of sucks, right? But at least we get to keep our removal. Let's attack, and then we'll just neuter the Augur. The file makes for so many neat little combat tricks. Combo team. The hag wins it. Whoa. The old lady still got it. Reminds me of a mass, says Dreamer Stingo, but for Simic instead of Grixis. Yeah, there's been some uh, role reversals lately. I kind of like it. There's quite a bit of uh, graveyard synergy with white in the new set coming up. and Something I like to see. The Boros colors are all about learning history and such. Kind of like where this is going. Pretty cool. Down comes the Admiral. I don't know, unless he drops like four lands here, if I like this play. He knows we've got Edict. Oh, probably just has what, a um, Dispel or something? Hmm. All right. Well, let's try to draw some cards regardless. Do we see a Dispel? Bell Pierce. Say nope. Um, yeah, we gotta. Well, let's attack. Let's hopefully draw a damn land. It'd be a really competitive game if I had hit that third land. I mean, this is a little ridiculous. We played the Zealot. I'm sure glad I got rid of that extra Rager. I'd be staring at a whole lot of nothing. Give me a land. Land. That's some pretty terrifying artwork. Just pulling something inside out almost. Down comes Delver. I think this is our death knell turn. They're patiently holding Agony Warp. We're stuck at two lands. As we saw the last few games, lands are usually not a problem, but it's becoming one now. I think we're going to go 1-1 one, one into the first break as the captain swings. Snuff out anyone? That'd be nice. Down we go. Haven't seen any of our amplifiers. It sucks. Be cool to uh, have that. This was game one. Alchemist gift. Dusk Legion Zealot takes down Angler, right? Well, let's try and draw a land. If we do, we can at least duress. Force him to use it on a 1-1 one, one non-combat scenario. Land. Cool. All right. Let's pull out at least an Agony Warp or a Counterspell. Or maybe a Duress. Who knows? 
We had to really earn that last mountain, didn't we? Divest and Agony Warp. Let's get rid of Agony Warp. Divest. Reveal their hand, choose an artifact or creature from it, and they discard it. Interesting. Alrighty, and another Fleet Admiral. Down goes a Raja of the original art persuasion. That's how I roll. Yeah, I've got to, one of these days, update our sideboards explored. It's all still relevant, but there's a few extra new cards in there, and like Canon Age probably replace Electricery in the video you're about to see. And it runs a little long, so sometimes I cut out of it uh, if I'm back from break sooner than later. So yeah, maybe I'll have to do a few different versions of it. All right. Well, no sense in taking damage. And I know they got decay, so let's get rid of the uh, commoners and buy some time. So we're going to cross off Divest, and our opponent draws another mystery card. It's probably bad for us. Well, this is interesting. Let me just draw cards here. Alright. Yep. This is getting grim quick. I'll see what I draw next. Yeah, we could get a... Um, what's the... Um, ah, Defile. Followed by an Edict. That'd be a nice little one-two punch turn. But not with an extra bola showing up now. Now I can't even punch through for the uh, the damage. So. And Ponder's going to send us back. And I don't think there's any... We'll, we'll draw just to see what's going down, but... I think what's going down is our, our life total and the uh, percentage that we can pull this one out of our, a hat. So if we had mana, we might be, still be in this, but it stalled us long enough that the discard showed up and, well, you guys saw it. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. We'll take eight. Card advantage is getting overwhelming. Monarch. Well, we've already seen Spell Pierce, but this suggests that we're Hellbent. Can we sneak in? I'm just going to go try to grab Monarch, because maybe we'll grab another cast down or something, right? Well, not with that plan. Wonk, wonk, wonk. All right, guys. I'm going to concede this one. We'll be back for round three right after this. Welcome to Sideboards Explore. Here are the cards you should always look to first when building a proper popper sideboard. First on our list is Coral Knight. Being able to eliminate the worst threat on the board for one mana makes this card shine, especially for a color that lacks good removal. Crypt Incursion's ability to eat aggro players' graveyards and gain horrific amounts of life are not to be overlooked. Crypt Rat's capability to kill everything on the board is awesome. Make sure to master the multiple activation tricks to get rid of pesky undying critters in one swoop. Curfew punishes players for going all in on a creature. It's especially good versus Kiln Fiend decks and Hexproof. Curse of Chains can be used as removal in any white or blue decks. Great for isolating threats like Gurmag Angler. Duress goes a long way towards ruining your opponent's game plans on the very first turn. At worst, you get free intel on your opponent's hand strength. Electricery is one of the best mass removal spells in the game. For years, commoners were forced to brew with cards like Seismic Shudder to combat small armies. Not anymore. Flaring Pain is the only answer outside of a counterspell for some of the most powerful fog effects Popper has in its arsenal. Ghastly Demise is one of the most efficient removal spells in all of Magic, so long as your opponent isn't of the Swamp Persuasion. Lethal Sabotage is a flexible card versus artifacts and enchantments, allowing a 2 for 1 removal effect for a small amount of tempo loss. It's a great starting point for dealing with artifacts and enchantments. Gorilla Shaman is hate at its finest. This card obliterates affinity decks. However, never cast this without backup mana. Gutshot is simply amazing. You're able to eliminate the majority of early popper threats. This is the card you should be playing with in almost every deck you brew. Hydroblast and Pyroblast are fantastic catch-all options for decks that run enemy colors. Lumithread Field is nasty tech for decks that aim to go wide by playing a lot of little creatures. 
The majority of mass removal comes in black and red, and aside from early discard, once this sticks, it's impossible for black or red mages to remove it. Thank you so much to the people listed here. Your continued support means the world to me as we move forward, always inventing, always doing new things. It's just nice to have so many of you aboard. If you'd like to donate, please do so at the link next, and we'll see you next time. And we're back. All right. Let's see if we can get in the winner's column again. Let's do this, create here, and hope for victory. Yes, yes. All right. So yeah, that uh, sideboard's explored. I'm going to be looking to uh, update that. New VO. Some new cards. Things like Weather the Storm, Cannonade, and such. Um, yeah, it's about due for an update. I don't know. Maybe every two years or something I'll do that. See me age over the years, right? Or get thinner over the years, as, as the case may be. That seems to be a benefit lately. I see some of these old videos, and I'm like, man, who's that guy? All right, so yeah, this is the list we're playing. Uh, we didn't see any of our good removal show up uh, last game. This even counts as removal. That creature gets plus 1-1, one, one, gains death, touch, or lifelink. Hopefully, to, uh, for a successful show, in my opinion, I want to see a Crypt Rat with this on it, and then you you know gain 40 life or something against a deck like Elves or uh, RDW or whatnot. Um, a lot of fun. Very cool. Another card that kind of looks like my mom when she was younger. <laughs> Who I just saw. It's very cool to... Uh, Go out to Colorado and see the family. Got a lot of billiards in. Oh, quite the uh, billiard history family. My father used to own a, uh, a place out in uh, Los Angeles in the late 70s and 80s. Building pool tables. So my older brothers were always in on that. And I slept underneath one for the fun of it. Yeah, I want to keep this. But enough about that. Are you still on a low coffee count? Yes, I'm going to brew one now. Yeah. It's not been too hard. I just don't make as much, and then I don't drink as much of it. And I tend to follow it up with some, just a mug of water or whatnot, and I thought I'd have, like, withdrawals or something, but nope. All right. Well, let's get rid of this problem, child. Smack and attack. Keeping our land count up. It's nice when you get to four mana with a Crypt Rat. You play it, they counter it, you unearth it. Good times. Everyone knows it's my favorite card. And they see a creature-filled deck, and they're like, why are you playing Crypt Rats? <sighs> like I always say, you don't have to trip it. But as the game progresses and things die, you have the option. Cool. Well, we get another option. Get out of here. So removal's finally showing up. But we're not doing much with it. Our edge of the divinity has been hiding from us. This could almost be game over if we had it turn two, but a 4-4 four, four lifelink on turn two is pretty nasty, but the balancing act is that sometimes you're left with a 1-1 one, one that doesn't do much other than eat edicts or block well. I am so dependent of caffeine that I have to drink coffee on Sundays or I get a headache. Oh, I'm there with you probably, Captain. Uh, I, just don't, I just don't do it because uh, I have coffee every day no matter what. That's just how I roll. I haven't really tried much of the uh, completely getting rid of it. A couple months back, I think I had like a four-day period, but I didn't get headaches or anything. Just that's some wired different. Do I just run into this? Do I eat a counter spell? Or do I do that? Let's play the rat. Ask for a hard counter. Cool. It's the scenario I was telling you about on turn fours that I like so much. Boink. Hi there. Isn't Vlad Tepes Dracula? I know. And who's the captain of Dracula? That's the devil himself. Well, come over. I'm happy with the trade. Cool. Now do they invest in a ninja, knowing that we've got rats on board? This would be a really optimal time to grab our bonus uh, clout of the dominion, or whatever it is, uh, the, the plus creature stuff. Because you can even use it on the rat. And wrath for one and keep your rat alive. That's good times. 
he doesn't think I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll run that Gwillian right in there. Smack. All right. This is cool. We attack, and then we zap for three. Yeah. Bonk. Cool. Two, three. Hold down control. Zap. One, two, three. Say done. And we get rid of two of ours, two of theirs. Our life's up. Yeah, they got a trick. Nope. Okay. I don't want to walk right into a spell stutter sprite here, so I'm going to pass the turn. The next turn, I'll probably be able to play the Mimic. It'll get countered, and then I'll have an option of the Rat or the Mimic, which will probably be the Rat at this stage of the game. <laughs> That's well said, little fight. Better living through chemistry, not dependent living through chemistry. Well, good words, my friend. That'd be a good uh, quote if you were a magic card. And there it is. King of the skies. Not for long. Here we go. Oh, natural crypt rat. That's pretty nasty. We'll play this dude. I think I want to just bring back the rat. I just want the thread of it there. I know the Gwillian doesn't doesn't trigger that, so we'll just bring back the rat. That way, if I cast anything, the Mimic will get the bonus, and if he uh, responds with a uh, fairy, I can I can respond to that. Keep the board nice and clear, baby. Woo! <laughs> kind of a dangerous scenario here. This tells me he doesn't have Sprite in hand. So the pause here. He's... Worried about that, um, ah, what's that? Beckon Apparition spell. I'll make it a 4 4 and take down the Golem, no prob. So I don't believe we're looking at a spell stutter sprite hand. Of course, that can come back to bite you real quick, right? Mm. Darn, do I do this now or do I do it on this upkeep? I'm going to wait a turn and do this on his upkeep. <laughs> I think I do both, says Lorraine Zussi. Very tropical persuasion of this artwork. Nice little cove. A little simic flare there. Come on, opponent. What's going on? Here's where we'll strike. You can counter stuff on your turn. What am I doing? Turn off all the yields. Hmm. You know what? I think this is worth wiping the board. I want to do this for that to uh, go through. We're ahead on life. Might as well just do it two more times. Oh, I can't. He's dead. I was holding down control. That was strange. I let it resolve, though, so my bad. Bonk. So we've got lots of critters in the yard. Pretty sure they're just holding a ninja. Well, that could have kept us alive there. That's a little bit frustrating, but... We'll just play this. We got a hard counter, they got one. If not, we've got anti fairy tech for days. Some island in Thailand somewhere where you see lots of films. One or two James Bonds. Yeah. Multiple rats against a fairy deck can really keep this in the running. So we'll see. Just I'll just call that Delver with a W. And here we go. Crypt Rats. Very good in this matchup. This is good for the uh, surprise value, instant block, and it's kind of a silly thing to uh, to kill. You could argue we're a bit pre-boarded here. 
cast down the file. I'd like to make room for two distress because it again, duress is nice, but this will always grab something. And against a fairy deck, they have to have a hard counter to counter it. This you can just walk in a fairy bait. So, uh, and I love this. I think we get rid of Alchemist Gift again here, and I'm going to bring in two distress. Let's go like that. Alchemist Gift is great as the death touch spell, but you're still kind of two for wanting yourself if you use it that way. Optimally, you want to use it on that rat. Yeah, I kind of, maybe I should keep in one. Oh, of course not. <laughs> if I ever want my opponent to hurry up, I always have to just second guess my sideboard. I'm like, whoa, what about, and it's like, too late. <laughs> we'll mulligan this. Come on, deck, don't be like this. We'll keep, we don't have any threats, but we can at least deal with something and then look at their hand. Ugh. No lands, then all lands. Thanks a lot. Oh, well, what am I complaining about? We won the first game. Kind of have to defile that just so our distress doesn't get eaten by another fairy or we see that turn into a ninja on turn two. Always sucks. Now we're trying lots of our removal. Yeah, it does look like Thailand, doesn't it? As he sets up his turn, we're going to have to play on our heels here. Setting up probably a counter spell on the top to reveal. Trying to shut the door, which we'll cast down. At least we have turn three play, but we probably know where that's going. Unless we turn into another defile. So we can distress, get countered, and then smack. Woo! There's another one. Well, now he's in sprite range. So now I have to play the Rager. Hard counter? Probably. Oh, nope. Cool. Well, we can trade with a ninja. And we get a card, too. There's the thing we really want. Got to tempo that Crypt Rat out at the right time. Now that we've got a creature with a backside that can survive a little activation. All right, cool. Oh man, when I was crawling through the Cave of the Winds, there was one little, is it a stalagmite or a tight that comes from the roof? I think it's a mite. Um, I was hanging down and I, I saw it, you know, dim light and all, and it was one of the lower crouches that you had to go through, only like a five foot area. And uh, it hit, hit, the, hit me in the back, right next to the spine. Thankfully, I've got a pretty heavily muscled back, but Good Lord, <laughs> it just felt like somebody didn't punch me, but they punched me like, you know, with all of it just in pink, like very piercing sort of, uh, just, just, oh, uh, it was, I was like rubbing against the rocks and that was terrible. Stalact <laughs> Stalactite. Is that the way to say? Yeah. All right. Let us see what we're dealing with. Is this going to draw the sprite? Okay, that's fine. Because this is what I really wanted to cast. Now we'll play the Crypt Rats with the Bluff of Activation. It'll probably get countered if he has anything. Oh, well that sucks. Boy, it'd be nice if we had an instant answer to that, wouldn't it? Gonna wish that gut shot stuck around for a crypt rat. Where's the ninja? Come on out. There's another one. Man, is that crypt rat gonna have some fun? Especially if I can put that edge of divinity on it and top deck a land because then it will survive. Keep that in mind, that Edge of Divinity is nice on a Norshov creature, or however the hell you say that word. But you can also make it a 3-2 rat, and you just, against fairies, you can keep doing that kind of stuff, so. Boom, boom, boom. 
two cards in hand. What do we got here? Double Crypt Rat. Do you got the counter now? Sucker. You know what? I'm just going to pop this now. Done. Cool. If we drop into another swamp, we'll be smooth sailing with the Edge of Divinity, but there's quite a few dead fairies in the yard. Smells of dead fairy flesh. I really, really like that movie, The Beach. I saw that in the chat. forgot who said it um, with Leonardo DiCaprio. It's funny. I think it was either the screenwriter or somebody else ended up doing a lot of other movies I liked, but um, I'm not going to recommend it. It's definitely kind of a flavor of the day sort of movie, but I don't know. Just really liked it. Well, that's an interesting play. It comes all over with that. Cool, cool. Alrighty, what's more likely to get countered here? Let's play a rat. Yeah. All right. I'll attack. What are you going to show us, Delver? Nothing. Alrighty. Of one mind showing up. What cards did they draw? Let's find out. Let me play this. Actually, no. Let me do this first. I'm going to attack. This way we can wipe their board and keep a 4-4 on our side if everything goes according to plan. First part of the plan complete. Second part of the plan. Third part of the plan. We might have to ruin our own plan. This doesn't work. Last part of the plan. Boop. Zap. Left with a 4-4 life link and another rat in tow. All right. Take down Delver. We've beaten uh, Simic Fog and Delver, but then we had a really bad draw against uh, Blue Black Delver uh, Angler combo. So we're just going to go right into round four here. Hope the winning ways continue with Crypt Gift. Name so because of the uh, either Gift of Orzhov, which is three mana, or the card I'm kind of high on at the moment, this Alchemist Gift, which is a. Uh, Proving to be a little secretive. Of course, we are citing it out many times, but where'd my little engine go? There she is. So yeah, Gift of Orzhov is pretty cool. Does cost three. Does stick around, though. But I was just noticing it. I like to be low and mean and uh, wanted a tiny bit more flexible removal, and this gives it to you. So like, you can be attacking with a Dusk Legion Zealot, and if this is in your hand, you take down an Angler or whatnot. Um, you are two for one in yourself, but in a quality scenario, sometimes that's worth it. But obviously the ultimate is this on a uh, Crypt Rat. Or, you know, even a, um, hello, wake up, AI. All right, that's always what happens. Or remember the Gist of, uh, or eh, Edge of Divinity can uh, also be used. Ugh. Well, we've got a 4-4 flyer. We're on the draw. We've got removal. Uh, what do you guys say? I'm going to say mulligan. Ugh. God, what ugly hands. We'll keep this. Uh, we've, I love I love this. We have two of these. I'll get rid of a Gwillian. Hey, little fight. How do you say that? Gwillian? Am I saying that right? Gwillian. You're my uh, translation to uh, Deluxe's. Yeah, that's good. Hey, wow. Oh, that's a first. My hunch is right. <laughs> Down that goes. 
those. Okay, what do we got against a heroic, it looks like? Lifelink on lifelink. Frustrating. Of course, they can't really... Uh, Okay, uh, this is, I guess this is the uh, memo part of the deck where we're supposed to get screwed and the next game we're flooded and then we get screwed and the next game we're flooded. I think that's how this works. Well, let's go. At least we win the, win the race a little bit here, but we're just playing tennis with life totals at this moment. Yeah, there's a lot of options that do that Dreamer Stingo. My old favorite is just Vampiric Link. That sets there and can But when you have the boost mechanics, it's really cool because you get the um uh, the added ability of keeping your crypt rat alive against decks like we just faced. Alright, they're probably running some sort of blessing package here. Aquilian has to keep attacking this day. All right, cool. We've got options. Woo! Hmm. Now what do we do with them? The file on Earth. All right. I shall attack. And once he trips this, now we can strike. Strike fear. Get rid of that dude. All magic is relevant. Crypt Rat's going to do some work if we can get it down. It's so frustrating when you have days like this. I'm sure you've all been there. Like last game, too much land, then no land. Too much land, then no land. And now we're back to no land. Come on, kitty cat. What you got? Hmm. Need the blocker, eh? Ah. I sense a trick, so... Oops, shoot. I meant to attack there. God darn it. Oh, well. It's not like I'm at two life, but... That was strange. That was my hand not obeying me. Waiting for a trick. What's it going to be? I've got removal for days, depending on what he does here. All right. Well, I'd rather cast down this. It's gonna give it pro black, maybe. That's fine. It's on your turn. Surprised he didn't attack with that trick in tow. Interesting. Hmm. I want to keep my options open. We're gonna attack. Should be at 22 here. I'm not. You know, with a 4 4, I think I want to play the Crypt Rat. Okay. Any tricks here? Got another Karametra's Blessing, maybe? Hate having to do this. It's a little counterintuitive. And we don't gain the life. That kind of sucks. Our opponent's at. Two lands left. <laughs> Two turns in a row where we don't gain life. That sucked. Yeah, that would be awesome in Timski. That's what I mean. There's so much design space left with Retrace, and it's a problem every deck has where too much land, too little. It just so, it crosses off so many design checkboxes. It's almost a lazy mechanic. You, it like, fixes everything, in my opinion, but I'm very biased. Uh, let me get some a little bit heavier hitter out here. Might not be the best thing going uh, tapped out. All right. He's going to get a dude, but we're still going to attack. Oh, no, we won't. Because then we won't gain the life. But we got a nice blocker forever. Crypt Rat not going to do too much against that. Bland Trailblazer, but we've got Diabolic Edicts games 2 and hopefully 3. Uh-oh. Things are getting grim, folks. Maybe we should play a Perilous Myrrh instead of one of these other things. Nah, scratch that. I'd rather draw cards. It doesn't have a lifelink, and it doesn't have a trample, and it has to tap, so 
We're okay. Come on over, sucker. Can't be doing too much more of that, though. Crypt Rat is interesting. I just want to draw cards, though, but let me attack first. That'll keep us in it. Ah, this is a bit frustrating. You know what? I'm going to play the rat. I really want this out. If he drops one of those soldier dudes, that could get kind of hairy quick, and I, it's nice to be able to have the uh, control key option, being able to do all kinds of good stuff. That's an interesting play there. See, I would have blocked the uh, Nip Gwillian, not let me gain life, and then you get the emerge trigger back and call red on the uh, trailblazer for the extra counter. It's kind of overkill here. The life gain's the the problem for our opponent. I think they misplayed a little bit there, but hey, I do that all the time myself. All right, they're seeing there are the ways. Now this is where Gift of Orzhov is better because you can just fly over the battlefield. These scenarios do happen. I want to keep a mana available just in case we don't hit a swamp. So I'll play this to draw a card. All right, that's cool. Hmm. All right. I can't block any of that stuff. Nope, we got Edicts in the side because we have Rat's main. So against Hexproof and stuff, we can still get there. A little bit of life gain to keep us in it. I'm not saying it's easy. They probably do have an advantage game one, but a bit too many things going wide these days. I like to be able to target stuff. All the dinosaurs and stuff running around with their little mana dudes in tow. Ha! Well, we got the life gain advantage. We're not really killing much. Let me cycle here. I usually hate doing that, but boink. All right. Hey, we've got an option in flying, don't we? Let's let's do that now so that they don't remember this uh, kitty cat. And now we've got crazy pressure. One damage a turn, people. Woo! Hey, Popper Bar Popper Rack Barney. I always like the heroic decks. Good to hear from you. Thanks for chiming in. And Popper Popper with the, according to WOTC press release, learn is sanctioned. Out of the game meaning, yeah, that's what I took it to mean. Remember, we learned that lesson a while back with the uh, sideboards, right? And we can wipe the board here. Don't think I would ever really want to do that, but I'm going to keep the option open. Yeah, it's kind of a, you know what, let's, let's draw some cards. I might just be able to bum rush here. I think that's going to be the uh, the play. Hopefully, I want that big centaur to attack me here pretty soon. Be careful what you wish for. You might have another ethereal armor and get us almost dead really quick. There we go. It's the kind of turn I want to see. Can't do nothing. Hopefully, there's no mutagenic behind it. Cool. All right. Here we go with this. I will definitely be attacking like this. This, this, and this. Gaining four life back. Let's be a close one. Boy, how much do I want to need it now, right? Do they got it? Hmm. Well, that still takes two. I still gain the life. I'm all right with that. That's fine. All right. Hey, yellow. Oh, okay. We pull that one off. Heroic. We hit the W. All right. We do want these edicts to show up. That's our good way out against uh, a lot of their options there. Alchemist gift. 
I hate doing this. I know each game I'm, I'm in kind of citing these out, but I guess I, I don't want to lose two of them. Well, we'll keep it down to one. Back in Apparitions, a little, uh, not too many surprises I want to be pulling for for that. Um, we like that. We like the uh, targeted removal. This might be a bit heavy handed, but I do want to see stuff early. Love the Crypt Rats. I love everything. I guess we do this. Yeah, let's go like that. We've got removal for days and such. Is there any advantage of Diabolic versus Geths? Yeah, you know what? That's a bit of a, a missed call on mine. That's a really good call there, uh, Super Pooper 23. It should be Geths Verdict. Um, I, uh, yeah, there's no reason. You're right. It's just a complete... I think I had it in uh, the last build that I brought up, and I was quick off the plane, and I, I was liking how it was playing, and boom. But yeah, it could mean the difference. So definite, uh, definite upgrade there. I'll make a note of it myself. Shows how sleep deprived I was. It's a good thing about these glasses; they hide the bags under my eyes a little bit. Just the natural framing. Amazing mollusk. All right, we're screwed again. We're gonna mull again. All right, two lands. So let's hopefully we get a little bit more after that. I'll put back a rager. We'll keep this. We'll throw back a rager. Get this beep beep. Yeah, no, I'm just dead wrong there. It's a good call. Uh, okay, I said done. Here we go. We got cast down. All right. Bring this out and yield. Whoop. Yeah, when all this COVID nonsense first started, we uh, there was a really cool announcer, I think from the UK. We played it once or twice before, but he's got these two dogs, and he was so bored, you know, not being able to call races and stuff and announce sports that he does this uh, cool commentary with his dogs. So I'm bringing this up because that's the next co little commercial break I'm cutting to. Haven't seen it in quite a few months, so I think it was about time to have another revisit of a classic. Shall we? We shall. I'm going to play this just in case I can get kind of crazy, or we have a trip to uh, fly over the top of the battlefield. I love Crypt Rats. I do too, so much so that I'm playing multiples, if you know what I mean. Ooh, man, are they boarded against us. This is sweet. Who says that when they're losing? I do. I love seeing old Homelands art. You guys heard my Homelands woe story, right? I was the, I went all in on Homelands. I was like, this is going to be the set that does it all. Back before the internet and Inquest had all the deck lists and stuff. I was all about it. Let's draw some cards. I'll play this out. He might be. He might be. Cool. So we can fly over and at least hit for four here. This is a pretty terrifying creature. I think I'd be screaming and running the other way. It takes a lot for me, but... A uh, alabaster vis visage in the middle of the night. Pretty creepy stuff. Reminds me of the original Halloween movie. <laughs> Hot garbage. Well said. Yeah. Yeah, I just... I can't... I mean, I know it shows my age, but I remember... And the set before, I was like really regretting, like, man, all these things shot up in price. And boy, the next box, I'm just going to go all in and get a whole box. Heck with buying a few boosters. And and that set was Homelands. And about 10,000 shrinks later, which I think was green target creature gets minus 5-5 five, five instant. I uh, And I had multiple artwork. I think that was the first uh, set that did that. But good Lord, what a hot mess that was. Trade Caravan. <laughs> oh, man. Nostalgia City. Good times. We're going to be dead times here if I don't find some of our edicts. Come on, edicts. Show up. All right. I guess I could do this. Um, and I could kill one of those if I do draw an edict. I almost want to see another defile. All right. I just need to draw cards. I'll do that at the beginning of their turn. We don't have a play here. I 
I think, though, Vlad Tepes, that that was the first set that did that. So um, I think that was like the big, the big thing, the big reveal. I'm going to play cast down here just to try to make our edicts hit if they do hit. We don't have many turns left if uh, unless they're drawing like we are. And it looks like they are. All right. We'll try to go grab some sort of edict food. Come on, show up. No. That does absolutely nothing. I kind of want to run into something and then just unearth it, but um, I mean, I could do that with those dudes. Let's try that. I'm going to attack with both zealots. I don't have to do it with both. I'll just do it with one. Make our opponent really suspicious. And we'll at least be able to draw another card with this scenario. The dead card anyway. I was going to cycle it, but... I'm going to get some free intel. Okay. You know, there's a Leprechaun that is on MTGO, and I think when it hits, you can turn a creature green. It's really weird. Been wanting to make a deck with that, but it's very uncompetitive, as you would, might guess. Propaganda, it seems the first was Fallen Empires. Oh, that's right, yeah. The penny set. <laughs> Here in the States, everybody kept track of things with all the pennies and stuff. So, All right, looks like we're pulling even with Heroic here. They brought all their hate. We brought ours, but it didn't. It got here very late, and meaning we didn't draw any of it. I wonder how far away it was. So we're going to game three, which is cool. Makes for a good show. Governor. Boop. Hey, next card. Thanks a lot, Nick. Arabian Nights was the first set. Alternate generic mana symbols. Very cool. All right. I think I'm good to go here. I'm going to lose a rat, bring in a distress. I'd like to get another one in here so I can treat these as um, edicts, too. I've got quite a bit of removal. I'm going to lose one cast down. Because with the uh, diabolic edicts and all that, we've got quite a bit. So well, let's hope for the best. Yeah. Okay. I like those real-world sets like Arabian Nights. Shaharazad, I think, was the uh, lady that had to keep telling the stories because at the end of it she was supposed to be killed. I think that's the origin story. Yeah, we want to play first. All right, finally a kind of decent hand. We got early removal, we got draw, and we got wrath, and we got repeatability. And on Earth, we'll keep... This is the deck that led to my other deck that won a tournament called Eight Rat, which is uh, four on Earth and four Crypt Rat, but... Somebody likes Crypt Rats. Like I said, people always have that mentality with that or Martyr of Ash or something like, you know, you've got to use it. You don't. You choose when you use it. If the playing field isn't the right time, then you don't play it. Simple as that. When the S hits the fan, you've got plans and options and things you can do. Or sometimes you just block with it. You unearth it for one and wrath the whole board. It's a nice option to have. As we go down to 17. All right. You know what? I think I want to play the rat. This will keep things uh, edict friendly. It's not going to want to pull something out unless it's the death speakers. I think that's the name of that little one drop that does all the magic. All right. All right. Or I could just block here. That's an option, too. Ooh. First strike and two. Dang. I'll put it to four. Well, that defile might be able to kill the uh, trailblazer pretty soon. But, as it sits now, I'm just going to play this. Uh... 
I don't think we have an option there. If I get the 4-4, that won't fly, and I still have to hit for 4, so... We will keep that lady back. Actually, I could just block with it. Gain a life. Let's do that. Yeah. This is going to be an exciting turn. Not going to gain any life here with the first strike, but whatever. It is getting grim. Okay, that's five. That'll put that to three. One, two, three. If you pull. Hmm. I guess we just block and smack for five. Am I missing something here? We could defile, which would make this. We we'll just kill that. It's not a bad play either. This is the problem, though. Let's defile here. Yeah. I guess we just pop for one here. Yeah. Just had to stare at the board. Sorry for the uh, <laughs> bad theater. All right. Bonk. Sometimes it's so obvious you miss it. Lose our dude. We'll play here. And we'll reset the rat. Boop. Not a bad turn. Hiya. Yeah, on Earth and Crypt Rat. Uh, just made for each other. It's a love song, I tell you. Back comes the sacred cat, I'd imagine, or sentinel's eyes, or both. Down it goes. Crypt rats of God. Two, four, and I'll rat the board. Don't tempt me, sucker. Oh, maybe I won't now. Nine. Dang. I could still maybe do it. <laughs> this this guy's probably like, what a lucky son of a. We're going all in with the one bonk. Tell me if you've seen this one before. Yeah, they should be at 13 if I was playing a better card and guess verdict. Thank you for that. I think it was Super Pooper 23 that called called that on me. And now you get to do everything again. Hey, all right. Okay, guys, I'm going to roll to a commercial. Use the restroom. We'll be back for the last round or right after this cool little dog uh, skit. Courtesy of, I think it's Andrew Cooper? Sorry. Well, how fitting that it should come down to these two. Olive in her familiar black, five times the champion. Mabel, the rising star winner last year. You can see how excited they are. But also feel the tension. Get on with it. And here it's in the crowd as we near the start of this final. And now they go, Olive away first. But a problem with Mabel's ball. That might cost her now, having to play catch up. Both settling quickly into rhythm. You can see the contrast in styles. Mabel, heavy tail use. Happy to be alive. Everything's amazing. Olive, more steady. Wasting little energy. Very much of the old Labrador school. Eating's a serious business. Don't bollocks around wagging your tail. And Mabel seems just a, a little sluggish here. Perhaps more was taken out of her by the worm medicine she was given last night than we thought. But Olive, focused, relentless. Tasting absolutely nothing. Mabel trying... But surely a lost cause, her title defence coming to an end. Olive taking everything, nothing left but the ball to lick now. And Mabel, well, doesn't seem too upset. A bit of class there from the youngster, generous in what will surely be defeat because Olive has won now. She's taken the title back at seven and a half. Mabel looking to offer congratulations again to the dog who was her inspiration growing up. Once more, wonderful to see that spirit in the game. What a final we've had here. Great rivals, but... Great friends. Oh, and you see the swapping of bowls at the end. Uh, join us again tomorrow. Live coverage of a snooze on the sofa, possibly. Bye for now. Are you feeling bogged down or despondent? Has a friend or loved one noticed you look withered? Then Phyresius may be right for you.
Phyresius is an all-natural Phyrexian supplement that can give you a different outlook on life. Do not take Phyresius while enchanted, equipped, or have shroud. Players taking Phyresius should not man vehicles for at least three turns. Avoid contact with humans or merfolk if you've had a recent gut shot or have had any interactions with the graveyard. In extreme cases, exile may occur. Ask your alchemist if Phyresius is right for you. Available at Morass's Market. We're back for the last one. Let's see if we can pull this off. Yeah, I miss Pyrrhesius. I dumped a lot of copy into that. Every little word in there is a magic card. So if you look at the transcript of that one, you might be impressed. Hi, these hands are getting to me. We will mulligan this. Cool. We'll keep this. The deck that can do everything, and it's one color. Good times. How to do that? Maybe on the uh, community part of YouTube, they have the little community link. Might post the script for that one. We'll keep this. What are we gonna throw back? Do I tempt fate? Uh, I guess we get rid of a Beckon apparition. Not much to do there. This is the kind of hand. If I got rid of a swamp, I wouldn't see one for like five turns, and then I'd be like stuck at Ragerland. So I would just stick to this all off. <laughs> Yeah, big pharmacy is pretty scary if you think about how much and how often commercials online are just... I mean, I made that like three years ago and it was bad. Now it's like I would have never thought that 90% of the commercials are drug commercials. And you're also seeing... No, not meant to make anybody feel uncomfortable, but there's so... You're seeing a widening, at least here in the States, of actors and people. It's like, yeah, it's okay to really start letting yourself go and just take this drug. And it's like, whoa, what kind of message is that? My wife works in uh, the legal field and every deposition, that is always the thing. It's like, lose weight, stop smoking, lose weight, stop smoking. It's just every ailment, guy could have a hurt back, lose weight. It's like the first thing, hundreds and hundreds of depositions later, it's what she takes away is just, it's always that, but yet, Big pharma and stuff, boy, they just keep taking those pills. Take this pill to counteract that pill, which might lead to this pill that takes this pill, and then take this third pill that equals these other five pills, and we'll see you in the morning. Maybe. Unless you were snoring, then you need this pill. Boop. All right, what are we going up against? Black with spare supplies? That's a nice way to go out. Oh, a little Ars Hovian uh, stem. I got two Ars Hov decks, and uh, notice how I said it differently both times? That's true, Shirazamon, unfortunately. I really think the world needs a big scare, like a meteor or something, like really close call. Maybe it even hits in some ocean and just kind of makes people realize what really matters, not all this crazy tribalism and money and come together as a people instead of all these factions. Anyway, enough about that. Let's play some magic. Sorry about that. All right, what are we going to do here? I'm going to try to win. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it by doing this. What to... What? Hey yo! I don't think I've ever played this person before. I usually, I don't remember the names, but I know I remember if I have played them. If that makes any sense, this is where I kind of want to see an edict show up, but no sense in doing this. We're gonna have a four-four flyer next turn if things continue. Okay. And, hmm. The disdainful looking Therabin Inspector. Cool. Now we've got a defile target, don't we? What shall we do? What is this new devilry? All right, cool. Well, I'll get rid of this while I can. Zap! He's probably got the uh, omen of the omen of the gods, omen of the dead. That's what I'm talking about. So I want to keep that uh, Beck and apparition in hand. Let's do this. We'll attack. If he had omen, I think we're going to see it here. If not, I can get a little reckless with my Beck and apparition. 
You're not fond of the old bordering? You mean this, these kind? Got to get more specific, Nim Chimsky. All right, down comes that guy. We've got targeted removal, so we don't have to worry about our edicts getting eaten up by a inspect. Ah. Hmm. All right. I do like his taste in lands. Or hers, you never know. Oh, I see, yeah. The old, oh, I see what you guys are saying. So this is the old border, yeah. You can see it. The uh, time shift stuff. All right, let's beckon out a Sky Fisher. That'll give us a 4-4 four, four next turn. How, you would say? Because we're going to edge a divinity at, divinity at... Unless it gets eaten, which uh, there is a swamp up, so that's a possibility, especially with... Uh, I think this is a Pestilence engine, so... There might be that in our future. Let's see. Hey, it lived. Cool. I'll show you how to play black white. You lose all the planes and you just keep it swamps. Aha. Now I want to see an omen of the dead because then I can eat it. Pow. So the deck's finally, not finally, we're three and one so far. Hopefully going to be four and one, but um, I know we had some kind of anemic starts with the... Uh, our little 1-1 one, one life dude and Edge of Divinity never showing up. That was really frustrating. We're just removal for days here. Looks like Pestilence, but Pestilence doesn't usually play Inspector and Skyfisher. Well, mine does. Ooh, don't like that. All right, let's kill this. And I'll make another flyer. We'll get rid of a, a Skyfisher. Just because if a uh, Omen shows up. Maybe we do need our cast down. All right. Well, let's go. I think never play afraid against this kind of deck. They just hope that you're just going to sit back and it's like, now we're going to get in an extra two, which is going to mean a big difference when a pestilence does show up. Going to hurt real bad. And who knows? Maybe they didn't draw it. And you know, these spirits, if I, I can block and kill the Guardian with that 4-4. Four, four. Ouch! Our own tech against us. It's hopefully not enough. Oh, yeah. Uh, use it now or lose it. All right. It's funny. It's like, we're both playing the same colors. Kind of. There will be a W in our future. I think they forgot to hold down control. Oh, man. I'll play another one. That's too fast. Our opponent went and ran away. All right. We'll make it six games. But we did go 4-1, technically. Yeah, it's a cool little list. I just, I really wish the... um. Um, the gift engine would show up being able to throw that on a rat watch it some like teachings and it'll be like an hour long match I'm like damn it I should have ran away <laughs> he ran away god these hands continue this is this is tempting uh, what do you guys say you know it's a six game let's keep it we're on the draw let's go They'll probably turn into a hot mess. Yep, he's got the remo a removal color. It couldn't be green that we keep that against, right? And now we're going to have this happen. <laughs> we're about to run away. This, these hands continue. Yeah, it's a good little deck. All about that opener. Get two or three lands and some critters. You're golden. There's enough removal to really keep people at bay. And now we've got a... Stare death in the face. Come on, give me a swamp. Of course not. Well, I'm just going to go all in here, and I will scoop if he kills this. This is just how this game's going. Kill it. 
Oh, all right. Interesting. Boy, the over-under on that living? Not too much. I just want to see if a chittering rat's is next so I know exactly what he's on, and then we can uh, sideboard accordingly. Come on, chittering. Okay. We'll concede here. Most likely scenario in the tournament practice room, but not in a tournament. Called it. That's right. We will not let the suffering continue. We are kind of pre-built here. It's just we can't be sitting around waiting on hands. So um, don't have too much in the way of that, except that that's a, that's a nice little edict food. Hmm. I'm just going to keep everything like it is. Hey, you know what? I'll lose Alchemist Gift because it's a, a wait around card and I don't want it to be stuck in my hand. And I'll bring in... Um, to distress so I can pull out Gary's and be kind of more proactive. I'm a big fan of distress. I argue with that with my son a lot on that. I, you know, duress is a better card, but in popper and uh, I think it's a really good call with fairies running around and being able to pull a tog or fling or parts of a combo. And if they don't have a spell, you grab a creature. It's pretty awesome for that extra mana. Yes. Oh, come on, deck. All right, uh, we already suffered through that. We're going to mulligan that. I said mulligan. Thank you. We'll keep that. We've got two draws. We've got some early removal. We'll keep this. Stuff will die. We'll get rid of the rats. We'll draw those later. Not now. Yeah, and distress is mostly there for a tog or fling or both. If you... They're all both. Cool. We have hit three lands. We've got creatures. Let's go. Things are looking good. And here we go. Cool. Looking better. Hopefully they use good removal on a bad card. Dusk Legion Zealot earns its keep just by casting, and then after that everything's a bonus. Card's really grown on me. So if you squint, you'll understand the reasoning for a lot of the uh, decisions in this list, being that we don't have sign in blood, so we just go with a creature package that makes up for it. Oh, got a libation, we got a rager, and we've got monarch. See how we can choose all of these things? We don't have to choose libation. So he's got to turn three play next. Um, it'd be kind of funny if he does that. Yeah, I'll make him lose the... Uh, oops, I meant to click on the rager. Oh, well. <laughs> Darn it. Well, we can kill everything he plays, so don't really have to worry about the creatures. Let's keep that open. There's no shortage of swamps, that's for sure. I meant to take that rager. Here he comes. Or not. It's a strange hand. Boy, we are just... Uh, it seems kind of crazy against this, but I'm going to cycle this. Cool. I'll play this. All right, that's enough swamps. Last game didn't get the memo. This one does. Ooh, cool. All right, that makes sense. I was wondering why I was waiting around there. And this could be a problem. If he can get and hold Monarch and uh, there goes the Thorn and a Swamp. There goes that. This is when you want a Ginger Brute. Hey, that's a cool card to draw right now, ain't it? Let's use up our cast down mana. We'll wait till EOT so he thinks he's out of the woods. When you have the option and it's a uh, five and up, I think it's better to play the more expensive spell. Keep your hand filled with the files. Oh, game of numbers. Yep, 
usually you'll see Paracas libation in in new brews. So like, I'm gonna try this out because I just ran into the X deck, and if I had it, you know, I got the flexibility, and then you convince yourself that one more mana is not that bad, and in a deck that's already kind of slow. And to say it's the wrong call, never know. I love it in command, right? I use it there. Because I'm playing a uh, Rakdos deck, and there's not many ways to get rid of enchantments. I have like four spells that can do it. Hmm. All right. We've seen enough of these. Seen that. I'll kill that. I'll do this. And he's probably going to have to kill this dude. So we'll, um, let's get rid of... Hold on a minute here. I'm going to kill this and then I'm gonna get rid of it because it has more viable target with unearth in a black deck I'll do that and see what we can see attack probably won't live if it does I'm gonna be super happy yes that might be game simple as that because we have removal we know they don't have a Instant removal. Yeah, my son really liked Feed the Swarm for a while. He, I don't want to say he grew out of it because that casts, casts a negative light on the card, but there's a time and a place for it, that's for sure. He saw something in it, but moved on to Geth's Verdict and stuff, which is what I should be playing. But It's funny, we just showed Orzhov what you should be playing, and now we just showed, hopefully we're going to just show Mono Black how you really should build it. <laughs> Casey has another one. I'm going to put this on top. And maybe we can bite a duress here. We'll just EOT kill it and uh, go from there. Bonk. Hmm. Well said, Captain Vladipis. Come on, get me a multicolored spell. Let's turn that mimic on, baby. Yeah, that's my deck of choice, too. There's Super Pooper 23. Get me some. You know, we've seen Suffocating Fumes. This is a little reckless of me to go out this way, but I just want to keep my hand empty and my options open. How funny would rats be here, right? Yep. All right. Oh, we're still Monarch. Definitely a bit of the deck's weakness, that fragile backside. We have instant answers that can keep things alive, but... Okay. No creatures. I'm just going to outdraw them with all these answers here. Let's empty this hand. It's probably got a Gary or two in it by this time. Let's see what you got, mister. Blackburn Rovers. Yeah. It's one of my favorites, too. Ooh, well, there's all kinds of nastiness coming our way, isn't there? Uh, I guess we'll get rid of the file. Uh, make them use it. We'll go grab some life. Play it. Frustrate him every time he draws rats. <laughs> Dash hopes. Yeah. You won't see me playing a card where you give your opponent choices. That's usually bad. Except Tyrant's choice. Not much of a choice. Says it right in the card. Ooh, the specter. Well, that'll put up a fight. We're going to need to uh, have an answer for that real quick. Now, that's a lot better card than Chittering Rat. There goes that. And there's that new one. Uh, Silver Quill Pride Mage or Pledge Mage. I think you can, like, choose to give it lifelink or that. I don't think it'll see play, but... Yes! <laughs> Top decking like a wizard! Of course, I am drawing an extra card every turn. Thanks to my opponent. We're not out of the woods yet. This is... Come on, Chittering Rat. Come on. You know you want to do it. You know you want to do it. Top decking like a monarch. Huzzah! 
Bye bye, edict. Sucker. Have fun with your three mana bear. Hmm. Why not? Watch, we just get corrupted. Wham! <laughs> this choice real easy. Done. And he's got another edict in the yard. Yeah, there's one there. So we'll just put out the food here. Going to watch our life total. Let's try to put him away with this. If he's got a chittering rats, that's fine. I'll eat it. We've already seen two of the uh, suffocating fumes, which is very good against us. Helps when you draw that second land, right? Here comes the Dusk Legion 7 mana removal spell. Yeah, that card was interesting to me. Um, whenever you instant sorcery spell gains your choice of flying or lifelink. Yet another example of something you could probably play over uh, Chittering Rats in my quest to slander that card at every chance. Down goes this. All right. Wah, wah, wah. We lose it. I'm going to draw too many cards if this keeps up. It's enough swamps, please. Ugh, come on. This is ridiculous. Give me a creature. Fine. I'll take it. I'm a little worried about another specter showing up. That evasion really scary with Monarch. All right, we got another removal spell. Let's get Edict Proof. Here we go. I got beaten down by two hags today, says our opponent in the near future. <laughs> Once your life... And all your worldly possessions have been surrendered to her. The Gwillian can be surprisingly civilized. <laughs> Interesting little quote. Using good removal on bad creatures. They get great, though, if we can enchant them. But my goodness. I need to swap meat for swamps. This is ridiculous. Okay. This is going to be a long game. We might get milled here. <laughs> My goal is to uh, zap for nine if I can drop a protected you-know-who. Crypt Rat! Unearth! Let's check it out. We've got three unearths left. We have three Crypt Rats left. That's six cards and 24. Ooh, that's a pretty quick engine. Considering he's only got an Edict in there, I think it might be worth trying to swing at him with a 4-4. Yo, there's that. We'll get rid of a Swamp. Okay, we'll kill it, and then we'll make our own flyer. Get out of the sky, sucker. Whoop. Let's go get a creature. Are there any more chainers? Get out of the... I hate these little notifications. It's like, irritating box, press X to remove it. It's like, how about you just not show it? Designers? Okay, cool. Oh, I just shut the door here. If he kills this with whatever spells in his hand, I'll just bring back the rat and hit him for the rest. Come on over for four. Okay. I love when the math works. And we go to game three. Bonk. Bonk. 
It's a cool deck, I tell ya. Yeah. Note to self, don't keep one landers. Just gave away that other game. Ha! Ah. Siphon Life. I haven't seen any bogs. I think I want to bring in one Siphon Life. And I think I want to get rid of one rat. Let's do that. Rats for nine. Zap. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, everybody. I know we usually don't play six games, but we scared a uh, pestilence so bad that they had to run away and get a blanket. All kidding, you know. Well, we've got all kinds of ways to bring stuff back to, from the dead, but we don't have anything to bring back from the dead, which is kind of a weird draw for this. Now, this is where I'm going to mulligan and I'm going to see one land. This is where, yep, even worse. This is where our deck beats us. Mulligan, thanks uh, effing a lot. Keep. Let's throw uh, this out. This out. Done. We just have to hit a land and just can't survive with a four land hand against the deck that's going to be taking cards away. If they have a heavy chittering rat hand, you can squeeze out of it. But if it's any sort of good discard, <laughs> sad trombone dot wave. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Hey, there's a little bit of the puzzle. I love this deck, but as with all decks, sometimes they can they can just lose. I can punt. Or the deck can draw like that. That just happens. Let's get out some cannon fodder. If he kills it, we've got unearth, we've got draw. Okay, things are starting to look a little better. As is the way of the universe when you add options to the equation. There's our friend. I guess we'll put this down. We'll kill that. Let's just cast down. Bonk. Attack. I could swing for three with the Legion Zealot, but... Alrighty. We'll discard this. Okay. And then we'll unearth it and kill stuff. And do all kinds of neat things. Bam! Get out of my way, sucker. Nice guy, to mimic. And uh, should I try it? I don't want to get ratted. Bop. Well, hold on. Cancel. Get chittering rat. I'm just gonna go for it. It's a seven-seven now. It'll be a four-four natural. Rather be hellbent against a person that has that much removal, so. All right, come on. Once we get double edict. At least we're at three lands now, so we're kind of in top deck mode and feeling okay. That's a good, good scenario. The file's scary. Uh-oh. Cast downs available. This is it, folks, till next week. Now, I might next week, I might kind of do a little community build thing. I come up with a premise, and we build the deck together. Does that sound intriguing to you? Maybe only play like three or four games with the time uh, spent? I don't know. Y'all let me know. I guess I'll let the cat out of the bag. I've been trying to build a uh, Simic um, hex-proof deck, but not, not so fast, you might say. Uh, I really want to focus on Aura Gnarled and getting to it and protecting it um, in a shell like that. I guess you could go Bant and you could still gain the, have the life gain, but I'm not quite sure if, uh, you know, you got to be careful with those kind of design decisions because you can end up um, just making a bad version of a deck that already exists sort of thing. So keep, keep that in mind with a Simic Slant, Aura Gnarled by four, a lot of enchantments. 
That's what I was thinking. Are you kidding me? I'll have to check that out. Maybe he's even got one that's... I have... I'm guilty of not watching a lot of uh, others' streams, and that one I'm guilty of. Well, I think blue's mostly going to be the draw, the uh, go find it. I don't know if you want to go as far as the Omen of the Sea, but and I know there's um, that Drake that returns enchantments that might act as a Skyfisher engine to uh, you know bounce uh, abundant growth. Um, I've got a few things on the brain with regards to that, so we'll see. I'm, I'm not going to play scared here. I'm just going to go. If he wants to go two for one on that, that's fine. It's served its purpose. I've got on Earth. Cool. Don't play afraid. Smash face. Thank you for that little fight. I'll have to check that out. Note to self. Yeah, I swear. Spell Slam and Chid 3, I got to start watching them regularly or at least having like some sort of alert because I'm always pleasantly surprised. That's an interesting trade option, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, yeah, because he's got the minus one one. That's why. He's frustrated he can't use it. So that'll just, that'll inform my next choice. That's that hesitate block scenario it tells me he's holding that. So, uh, more ragers, less cagers. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to rhyme to do it. But instead of the uh, mimic, I'm definitely going to pull the other rager out, draw a card. And this isn't made bad for Mullen of four, wasn't it? Or was it five? It was a lot, and it sucked. Okay, they must have some removal here. Now the mimic makes a little sense. Now. He wants me to attack with both, and then he's got the uh, double play there. That's what's going on, I tell you. Let's see if we can thwart his plans. I'm going to grab the Rager. Draw an option. Oh, heck, maybe we'll just play his list next week. It might be cool. So if he's got that, he's going to run for one me, but that'll, that'll kill that too. Or it won't kill it. it it'll neuter it. Yeah, we just got to attack here. Really wish I didn't draw a 1-1, but... Does that, blocks. I'm left with two ragers. If that's what happens. Is it? I'm pretty sure that's what he's on. Yep. Oh, it's opponents. Hmm. For some reason I swore that just said all creatures get. Never mind that soliloquy. All right, well, we still got options, and I don't want to get ratted, so we'll just play this out. Encourage him to keep bringing in those suffocating fumes. They are pretty good against me, so. Yeah, never never quite been a fan of Dreamstalker. It's so hard to kill, and it is so meaty, but I want to close the door, and I want to have counter magic, and I want it to be all about finding that Gnarled and slamming it down and being able to protect it and unblockability and evasion you all know me i don't i don't want a thing that can be dealt with or that can be uh poked and prodded or blocked by little dorks like these i've always loved or narled i think it gets so big so fast i always dug that card there's no good scenario here and i'm just gonna play this and you'll know, see so yeah we we got our opening uh I think we triple mulligan. That was a butchering hand, and we're playing kind of even here. Actually, we have the lead, but we're losing it quickly because of uh, Monarch. But I mean, we completely gave away game one, and then our we crushed game two, and then this one, I just drawn some really bad cards. Shielding plant. Can you bring up a uh, shielding plant? Oh, that's the two in a Simic color combo. Yeah, it's one of those. It it starts in your list, and then after about four games, it. You, you cut it, <laughs> like bio shift and things like that. Yeah, I've thought of that. Uh, you know, try not to make it go bant. A little purist in me kind of wants to see how streamlined you can get it. See, in in creative endeavors, which all of you take part in, even if you don't consider yourself a creative person because you're playing magic and you're making decks and things like that. But what I mean is like in a, in the art world, oh, boy, this is going downhill fast. Um. 
creativity is horrible in a vacuum, meaning like you're not giving any, any rules. And I, I propose that I just say, let's keep it Simic. We can always splash white if we find out that it absolutely must have it. But I think having those walls to push off of and just, okay, we can't go there. Tunnel vision, let's, let's focus on this for a new thing. Um, I think that's important. One of the very worst things you can tell creative type um, well, let's take for example Animal Tronics, the guy that um, did the propaganda theme song. I gave him just enough parameters. It's got to do this. It's got to do that. And I want it to sound a little bit like this. And that was perfect for him. And then it was all creativity after that. I don't know why I'm doing this. We're just uh, maybe we can top deck a uh, unearth with it. Do we have a rat? Nope, we don't. Cast down. This will uh, hurt him some more. So let's get rid of cast down. I wish we had a chittering rat in there. Or like, you know, a writer, you just say, write anything, you know, and you think you're doing them a favor, like, you know, oh, I'm not getting in the way of creativity. And it's like, eh, you need to give, you need to give a few parameters. You need to be like, okay, this is a wall. You can go any direction over here, but don't go that way. That, that sort of thing. That's what I'm talking about. Diplomatic immunity, yes. But Shroud is not that great because we probably want to be throwing enchantments on top of it or having the option to do it. You know, seal of removal probably deserves a spot. That's pretty cool. Eh, let's maybe ask for, oh, ask for one more turn. This is a pipe dream. We really need a chittering rat in the yard with uh, in top deck and unearth for this uh, scenario to go through. This is cool. There we go, that. I take such thorough delight in going hellbent against typical mono black strategies, even when I'm losing. That the pleasure reward center just doesn't make sense in my brain. It's like I, I should not derive that much pleasure out of that simple play, but I always do. All righty. Well, we don't really need that. Let's get rid of a uh, that. We're dead here. We're at five, even a a rat. At least we can go to a game four. <laughs> but that's pretty even, Stephen, right? I mean, my bad decision to keep a one-lander game one, we just kind of auto-scooped, and then we thrashed, and then the deck decides to do us one better and smack us. Make no mistake, this is usually a pretty favorable matchup. It usually goes more like game two. As we come out to game six, and that'll do it, folks. We'll hand it to the chittering rat. Let them pat themselves on the back. False sense of, it's tournament ready, right? <laughs> anyway, guys, so yeah, um, next week we're going to a uh, little, I guess we'll call it a, um, not a challenge, a uh, community build, whatever. Um, over the week, you know, send it to propaganda And uh, again, we're just going to try to stick, not just, stick to just blue and green don't please don't send me something in five minutes that you just threw together uh play it a few times tweak it look at the metagame um or don't but if you're going to send me something please put a lot of um thought into it and explain some of your choices and we'll discuss it on the show and i'll have my build when the show starts and then we'll look we'll look at a few different options hopefully i can already have yours preloaded and uh give and go and maybe we'll come up with uh something viable that's cool whatever i'm sure it's not going to go 5-0 or anything but you know that's not what this show's about we're about creativity and finding the next new thing and uh promoting you know all the cool stuff so uh yeah keep it simic and uh or narlid's got to be the nail in the coffin i want that to be the focus uh you know kind of a ramp sort of thing and uh those are your parameters propaganda knights so build on this is Crypt Gift. This is Deluxica for Crypt Gift and Propaganda. Saying thanks for joining me. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Propaganda, Saturdays, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until then, y'all, uh, yeah, good times. All right, man. Hey, we're almost at 4,000 subscribers, so I made this. See you next week.